All right, cool. Thank you guys for hopping on the podcast. I have a very special guest, Coffee Neat Whiskey Bl- No. No. Coffee, <laughs> sorry. Coffee Black Whiskey Neat. Yeah. Uh, podcast, Miss Danielle. I don't even know your last name. Kurt. Danielle, correct. That is right. Yeah. Danielle Kurtz. Danielle. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Oh, uh, Danielle, thanks for hopping on. Yeah. So I guess we met you from social media, and then I've seen you shop here in and out randomly over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, where are you from? Because like, I kind of asked you earlier, but like, if you were to, if you were to say a state, where are you from? I like to say North Carolina is home. I think that's where I spent the most time. Um, so I would say that's my my biggest tie is okay. the Carolinas. What do you do for work? I'm a mom. Oh, awesome! How how old are your kids? Uh, they are six, five, and my youngest turns one tomorrow. Amazing! Heck yeah! I have a. Uh, I'll show you. Those are my. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. How old are they? Six and four. Okay, so we're in the same world. So much fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's it, crazy. It is so much fun. But it is so much fun. So I was um yesterday, my wife and I were shopping at this place called Furniture Land South, which is the largest furniture store in the world. It's in High Point, one point two million square feet. And um, this lady is shopping with us. There was a wine glass, and her daughter was like, "Hey, look, mommy's glass." And I was like, "Oh my god, oh that's hilarious." Yeah. So, <laughs> Don't um, worry, on my uh, son's Mother's Day project. It said, what's your mom's favorite drink? And he put coffee, whiskey, and bourbon. That's and I was like, I think this parent or this teacher is going to have an issue oh, with me as parent, but you know. <laughs> that's amazing. So my son, when he comes in here, he'll, uh, he's heard the word Buffalo Trace a thousand times just being in here. And he'll like, hey, I'll buy the register with me and, and kick it. And we'll walk by and he'll, he'll go, people will be like, do you want Buffalo Trace? I'm just like, please don't say that to yeah, somebody. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a trip having a six-year-old or five-year-old this time asking. Um, well, cool. Thanks for helping on. Yeah. So, obviously, you're a whiskey influencer. Do you feel like an influencer? Is it just like a random side hobby that kicked off? Or tell us a little bit about how the Instagram started and then now the years of bourbon drinking. And now, I guess more bourbon. Whiskey yeah. Yeah. Bourbon. Just whiskey in general. Um, I guess. So, it started one day. I went to a bar and everybody has like some kind of similar story. But I walked up. And I said, can I have a Booker's Neat? And the bartender looked at me and he said, is this for your husband? That offended you. Yeah. And I was super <laughs> angry right from the beginning, right? And he said, no, it's for me. And he goes, and lady, I really don't think you're going to like it. It's super hot. I said, that's okay. You know, I appreciate your suggestion, but I'd like it anyways, right? And I mean, it was just, I think four different times we went back and forth. And I finally was just like, please just hand me the glass so I can walk away now. Yeah. I'm no longer. Was this a bar in Charlotte? Now. Yes. Okay. And so, how many years ago was this? Um, it was right when I started my page, so I think it was around four years ago. Um, because then the next day, you know, I was so angry about this, and I go home and I'm yelling at my husband about it all, and he's like, "Okay, just calm down," you know. Uh, but he had Instagram just as a fun thing that he did. He posted bourbon and stuff on it. He said, "Why don't you just go on Instagram and see if you can find other people, and then you can talk to them, so you don't have to keep yelling at me about this, right?" There you go, Valid. Basically, like leave me alone. Good husband advice. Yeah. (laughs) It was good. So I started it. And just to stick it to the guy, not that he would ever know, but I posted Booker's as my first post. Love it. Right? Just It was a little thing for me to just kind of own it and, and be offended by him, but turn it into something good. And so then it just kind of grew from there. Um, I definitely don't call myself an influencer. I wouldn't describe myself that way. That's not what I set out to do. I feel like sometimes the word influencer comes off very pretentious. Yep. Um, and I'm not here to sell whiskey, right? You know, I don't make any money from bottles that people buy. That doesn't do anything for me. What I want to do is say, hey, I really enjoy this one. And if you have flavor profiles that are similar to mine, then maybe you should try it as well. Especially when it comes to craft whiskey, the world is overwhelming. Right. And if you walk into a store, there's no way you can buy all of these bottles or try all of these bottles. So find somebody that has a similar palette to you and then follow things that they like and see if you continue to follow their palate or not. And that's all I try to do. So I focus on tasting notes for that reason. All whiskeys. All whiskeys, yeah. So it's, I mean, definitely heavily bourbon, okay. rye, starting to move towards American single malts. Um, scotch, for a long time, was intimidating. I think, you know, especially with the names of scotches. Yeah, like, I don't even I know half of them. Say this. Yeah. So how do I order this, or how do I buy this? Um, and there's uh, there's plenty of people that can do all of that, and I am not one of those people. But I really enjoy scotch. Nice. Um, I got into peated scotches mainly. 
I'm not a sherry finished person. I feel like you're either a sherry matured scotch drinker or a peated scotch drinker. Yep. Um, and I think I peat is genetic. Yeah. I really think that like people like um, cilantro. Yeah, like the soap flavor. Yeah, I think the same thing. I think people, it's like genetic and like they can change and grow, but you either love it or hate it most times is what I find. Um, that's amazing. How many bottles do you have? I don't count. I'm afraid to count. I've seen a picture. We're going to do an overview picture of yours. Okay. Is it like over 100? I would say it's like 450. Wow. Just 453. Yeah, no, no, no. It's like down, right? Are those bottles insured? No. Okay, I didn't know. I, I feel like I shouldn't say that, but no. I just have a friend who does, or he doesn't sell, but he bought insurance for his um, like whiskey collection, and they actually insured him at the secondary prices. Okay. So he paid like a, a normal premium. I think it's like whatever. 100 bucks a month he pays but he's insured on the secondary prices as long as the bottle's over halfway filled okay. and so if the house burned down i mean you have 400 bottles if they're each worth 50 bucks that's a lot of yeah we're not gonna get into no that. but you know i'm more concerned about if my house burned down what all that liquor will do to the fire oh it'll and definitely keep going out. yeah how much can we fire. lost you know <laughs> yeah, i know a guy that got lost his uh, home insurance because he had like eight million dollars worth of um alcohol in the basement out wow. in la and they did an inspection. They're like, it's too much flame. Yeah. And it's kind of on you on that sense. That's crazy. That's the scary part. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I probably won't ever insure them just because. You're just having fun. Yeah. Whiskey is just meant to be enjoyed. And yeah. I'm not buying bottles to put them away and resell later on. And You actually enjoy it. Yeah. I, I open all of my bottles. You know, I think there's one bottle that I have that will probably stay closed for a while. And it's Henry McKenna. Right. It's a. $35 bottle that I bought at that time and it's just because it has my wedding anniversary on it oh yeah that's the good I mean otherwise it's like whatever it doesn't matter how much it costs open it up it's does your husband also drink yes so he started all of this I blame him but who likes it more I would say I like it more now but at the time you know I really got into it because he was buying a scotch and I would sit back and say stop spending money on scotch right i mean we were 21 when we got married so i was like you know we're, we're 21 we don't have this kind of money stop just spending on alcohol very quickly. yeah and i didn't like it but i think he's a big nerd when it comes to it all and i say that lovingly yeah. um but i think the passion he had about it just made me say well as a good wife i need to find an interest in this it's awesome and then bourbon was that interest right like he introduced me to scotch i said no this is not where I'm starting. And I fell in love in bourbon. But when I was younger, I used to drink Jack and stuff. So it's kind of always been around. Yeah. You know, you go to parties and I didn't want the jungle juice. I didn't want the mixing bowl full. So I went with Jack. Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. Um, all right. With 30,000 followers on social media, have you monetized any of this yet? Some of it. Um, do you want to monetize, I guess, also? I mean, I mean do you have a, do you have like an aspiration because during the podcast, I always like to talk about business because I think a lot of people that are watching or, or listening to this either are in the industry or maybe are similar to you. With, you have a lot of followers or, you know, 5,000 followers or 10,000 or 50,000. Um, is there anything, either tips and tricks or goals that you're trying to accomplish from social media um, on that side? And the other question I'll ask going forward is like, do you want to be involved in the industry? Do you like, obviously you're passionate about it, like just from a fun standpoint, but I feel like this alcohol industry is missing so many wise female palates just because of the bias that women shouldn't be involved with brown whiskey for some weird reason right. but um yeah so i guess first question on the on the um goal of the instagram which do you have a goal uh you know when i started it it really was just for fun i never expected to get to this point even um and to to be able to sit back and say do i want to do more or any of that i never expected any of that i never tried to get to that point i was just having fun with it and it grew from there um but, all organic growth, yeah right? all organic and i think you know timing is everything i was in a group called the bourbon alliance when um COVID hit and so we were doing a lot of virtual tastings and it just kind of helped grow that because the industry was missing the fact that you couldn't go to the bars anymore yep. right so uh, the option was well what can we post what can we try online um to explore the craft worlds and that's kind of what we focused on and then it grew um much faster from there mm. um just being able to explore different 
whiskeys that not everybody has access to because a lot of them are not distributed because people are shipping and giving you these or gifting or whatever yeah they're they're gifting um as a way to share and then you know once you hit a certain threshold of followers then more brands start reaching out and and all of that so for people that want to get into it you know don't be discouraged if you're sitting at five thousand and brands aren't just reaching out to you left and right it's it takes time right and there are plenty of people that reach out to brands and say hey i want to try this i want to do that and that works for them. I'm not that person. I've never reached out to a brand. That's all. Just because I feel like, you know, I don't I don't want to sell myself in that sense. Um, that's not my goal. So it's anything that's come to me has just come organically through um, DMs or emails or whatever that it might be that I've worked with marketing firms or with brands themselves. Um, but I don't think, you know, long term, I would like to see it continue to grow. I would like to eventually find a way to incorporate working in the industry in some way nice. but truthfully i have three little kids they come first you know i was a teacher before i had kids oh cool so it's like you know my world is my family and if it fits then great and if it doesn't then that's okay too it's awesome you know it's all it's all just been really fun so far and i don't want to lose that aspect I don't want to make it something that I feel pressure on or that I feel like I'm selling myself out in any way. You know, there's plenty of brands that have reached out um, for paid partnerships that I've turned down because I'm like, they don't fit me. So yes. I don't want to sell something just to sell something. I don't want to make money just to make money. You would like the product. Right. So I think it's just important to pick and choose and be smart about who you want to work with. Be smart about what you say. You know, there's... A lot of people that will bash brands and they get a lot of followers for it and that's great everybody has an opinion but right. i'm not that person people hate me for it too because i won't say i hate this i would drain for this whatever you know but at the end of the day this is a livelihood for other people too mm -hmm. and who am i to say everybody should skip this product and no one will like it it's horrible whatever there it's for someone someone's gonna like it I'm going to say, here's what I taste on it. If I enjoy it, I'll say, hey, I think you should try this one because I really enjoy it. If I just put tasting notes, I probably didn't enjoy it that much. Yeah, that's fair. But I'm not going to say this was horrible. So you do it from the positive angle. Thank you. <laughs> and I, you know, I get a lot of, I get a lot of hate for that, but you know what it is. When you say you get a lot of hate, is that like random people commenting on your socials or DMs? Yeah, I get a lot of DMs, but, you know, it's positive and negative. Your husband just, like, just kill them after destroy them? <laughs> he doesn't look at them. He stays off of it. Okay. Um, I think there's a lot of trust in the fact that we've yeah. been together for so long. Uh, you married 10, 11 years? Uh, 11 years. Oh, don't tell him I had to think about that. Okay. Uh, but we've been together 15 years. It's awesome. So, you know, he, he trusts that I'll tell him if it's a big issue. You know, I've, I've gotten pictures that no one wants to get, and I've you know, shared that I've gotten pictures in that sense and I'm blocked and whatever you have to do um, to make sure that you don't continue to get that. But as far as, you know, people's opinions, you have people that are super nice and want to just talk whiskey with you and you're like, great, that's why I'm here. And then you have people that are like, I don't like that color shirt that you wore. Your hair looks ugly. You look fat in that video. You don't drink enough. If you don't chug a bottle, then I don't think you actually drink. I'm like, I'm not here to get drunk. Right? Like, I'm here to just enjoy my whiskey. I don't need to prove to you just because I'm a girl that I drink whiskey. I know I don't fit the, quote, mold of it all, right? When I first started buying whiskey, I'd show up with blurry, hot pink nails. And they're like, uh... It's amazing. You know? <laughs> Drinking lookers. Yeah. I was a cheerleader. I was a gymnast. Like, that's my world. So, yeah, I'm not the typical grandpa's right. cough syrup girl. But, you know, here we are anyways. That just thinks to you of... Well, that comes with, I guess, influence. Yeah. You know, you're always going to get positive and negative. You guys get it, too. You get hate all the time. All the time. So, yeah. I mean, it's just part of it. You have to kind of get thick skin as much as you can. And Absolutely. Then block the people that you can't handle anymore, and that's that. I mean, like I said, I, I write tasting notes for all of mine. I write tasting notes for some brands um, that I've worked with and been paying to write their tasting notes to put on their websites and their bottles and stuff. That's amazing. And I still have people reach out, and they're like, no, you don't actually know anything. Do they credit you for the tasting notes? Yeah. yeah. If, well, I mean, if they pay you for them, they do. Okay. Um, you know, some brands will just use your tasting notes just because you've written them, and that's fine. Obviously, if you put it out there, you can give access to that. Sure. Right? Um, 
But yeah, on a lot of them, I have been credited, so it's nice. That's really, really rad. Yeah, thanks. Heck yeah, I <laughs> oh, love that. Um, when you're making content, how is what's your setup like? Well, I just built a table, which I'm really yeah. excited about. I finished it this week. You yourself built it. Yes. Yeah, so my whole whiskey room, um, the shelving and all that in there, I built. A friend of mine that helped me build it, but um, it was not there. You know, so everybody's like, oh, well, you just filled your shelves. No, I actually bought, like, big sheets of plywood that were four foot by eight foot and cut it all down and built it all on there. Is there a video of you doing that also? No. <laughs> okay. That's fair. I was just curious. No. Did, didn't know if that's going to be the next post. No enjoyed it but the table i do have some pictures of so maybe i'll put something together um but so now i have that in the space and it's my husband's office too so you know you kind of have to work around it yep. he kind of gets annoyed that i filled his office with whiskey but so there's like the desk and the computer and all that and then whiskey everywhere else I, <laughs> kind of like this room he blurs his background for zoom calls at work oh, and stuff funny. it's like just don't look behind me but i mean everybody knows so it's just kind of funny are, are you shooting with an iPhone? Are yeah. you, okay, iPhone, do you have like a white light type thing? No. Ring? Or? I'm not fancy. So um, um, I bought a ring. It was $10 on Amazon. So it's not a very good one, but I have one. Cool. But yeah, I mean, it's just an iPhone. And, uh, you know, we upgraded to a nicer iPhone, but for a while, my husband was standing there with my pink iPhone and he got really annoyed by that. So, <laughs> so now it's on a stand. Yeah. So nice. now he doesn't have to do that. Um, but we didn't get a camera, so hopefully we'll start incorporating that a little bit more. But I'm not, I'm not fancy. Yeah, that's this is still fun. And the other five year old running around in between yeah. your legs. I so mean, that's the thing is that people will say like, "Oh, I, your life is so glamorous. Like it must be nice to get to just sit back and drink all day." And I'm like, "What you don't see are the three kids hugging my legs at the bottom of the picture." You know that I've cropped off, and yep. it's real life, right? Like people think that you're not real, but you are you still have a life outside of all of this yeah yeah so cool i love <laughs> i love that all right on a week how long are you working on like content um and then reshooting i mean like all of it start to finish to make a do you mostly videos or pictures or both i used to be only pictures i've started to branch into the world of reels i don't think that i'm good at them by any means so you know everybody can just acknowledge that and i'm okay with it but uh, you're probably a lot better than if you because people that think they're good are probably terrible I, I, or mostly are terrible <laughs> i'm like so. i just own the fact that it's not great and it's fine um but normally it's just a one shot and done awesome but i mean you'll see like i'll i'll spill the coffee in the video you know because i'm like well i only had one shot of this i only had three minutes while everybody was quiet to try to film it you know so, yep. um so in that sense, there's not a lot of time spent on it. Um, the tasting notes are really where I spend the most time. You know, I'll, I'll sit down pretty much every night and taste a pour of something to write notes on. You know, I'm not, people think you're like just drinking nonstop. No, I'm not spending my day drunk. So, you know, there is that. But <laughs> I'm still raising a family. Yeah. <laughs> but I do sit down most nights and I write the tasting notes. And then, you know, the nice thing is that I started it just to um, bond with my husband over something he was interested in that became a passion for me as well but now we have it together so you know we get to sit down and share that at night and i think from my standpoint what's the point of having 400 450 bottles if i don't get to share it with somebody sure so we do have that time to ourselves that are like you know yeah i'm quote working i'm writing tasting notes or whatever you're just hanging out kicking it but we're just hanging out and it's a nice way to enjoy the night my wife, are we we got this saying from our friend. Um, she has her bed bourbon, and so <laughs> give the kids to bed, and then we go to bed, and she pours like a cup or fills up a wee Glen Cairn glass full of bourbon. I'm like, that's adorable, and yeah, I love. That's, it. Oh, that's so nice. So, what's her favorite then? So, I love Angel's Envy because it got my wife into bourbon. Yeah. She refused to try it until maybe like three or four years ago, okay. and she tried Angel's Envy, and it was sweet, and she liked it. And then I got to take her to a Maker's Private Select um, at Maker's to go build a Private Select. And then she built one called Beach Bourbon. Okay. It was like this big tropical fruit cast strength um, Maker's. And so she loves that. And she I, she wanted me to put back like, what, five cases of it for her? I was like, Sydney, you don't need 30 bottles of this. <laughs> She's like, but this is my whiskey. Yeah, yeah, she loved it. She lets everybody try it when they come over. Um, That's awesome. But she's more tequila now. Okay. So, yeah, we both, cool. I've down. switched over to mostly scotch and tequila. Okay. Just because I drink whiskey for work so often. 
we, we, we sample probably like on average two to five whiskeys a day here Okay. Um, for new single barrels and or new items. And so I was like, if I'm at home, I'm going to drink something different that I tried at work or on trips or whatever. So, um, yeah, she's kind of followed me on that. That's awesome. It's really nice to get to share it. Yeah, it's very fun. Uh, coffee. Yeah. So in 2021, and I think it was October, I tried coffee for the first time. Oh, my gosh. How did you make it so long in life? I never had caffeine in my diet. Uh, and okay, I don't know how you're surviving <laughs> with two children. I'm just throwing that one out there. Well, my wife didn't sleep for a long time, so okay. <laughs> she's the one that's had it harder. Uh, so I didn't try coffee until I was 27. Yeah, I guess 27. Uh, guy poured me a, um, he did a pour over. And a espresso shot was the very first thing that I tried. That's a hardcore introduction. Yeah. So <laughs> I was in downtown Waxhaw. At, it was at Provisions in Waxhaw. Guy poured me this. And I knew I had a meeting like 30 minutes later here. It was like an important business meeting with a couple of banks. And... That caffeine will hit, though. Okay. I never had ca- Oh, I'd had like Cokes and Dr. Peppers when right. I was a kid. But okay. not like As energy good, drink. Nothing. Or, no know, caffeine okay. at all in my diet from the time that I was like, 15 almost. Okay. I just got rid of all of it. Didn't want it. So I take that shot of espresso and a pour over and I walk in this meeting 30 minutes later and I like stayed up like, you guys are talking too slow. I cannot do this. I have to leave. I literally left the meeting and I called them like a day later. I was like, dude, I'm sorry. I just tried caffeine for the first time. They made fun of me and they were, they were cool with it, but it was a trip. Yeah. Um, and so now I like, I was like, okay, that's too much. I'm not going to do it. And then we got to try, um, it's a local coffee guy. He makes like bourbon barrel aged coffee. Oak and Bond. Oak and Bond. I love him. Yeah. So he then came in here and talked to us about selling here. So this was like Christmas, I think of 2021. Yeah. It had to be 21. So basically they either wash coffee beans or they let them, and it's like a chemical process in that sense. So, you know, it's like the coffee cherry. Um, and it's a fruit and then the beans on the inside. And so they have to wash away that part. It's not a fruit that you eat though. Um, although I don't actually know if you can eat it or not. I don't know if it's edible. You can taste the difference in it. In natural versus regular. Yes. Interesting. But natural coffees, I think, um, because they let them like dry in the sun and they don't put the chemical process on them. They just kind of wash them and then let them dry off. I think that they have, um, like, a creamier body to them. Um, I obviously don't put milk in mine or anything like that. So it's just coming straight from the coffee. But I think they're generally more fruit-forward and a little bit creamier to drink. Um, So you'll get more of, like, the apple, the bright notes like that. A lot of times you'll get, like, papaya or something along those lines that are tropical notes, which are really interesting. Really nice. Where if you go more dark roast, you're looking at more kind of chestnuts, roasted chestnut kind of flavor. Um, you can definitely get more of the burnt flavor. So you get like more of a, a charred marshmallow flavor on it or something like that. But they're also doing like crazy things with it now where they'll bury the coffee beans underground and let them ferment underground and stuff. I mean, the world of coffee and craft coffee specifically has really blown up. I think kind of in line with the craft whiskey area and i don't know if those things go hand in hand or not for me they do you know i drink coffee until it's time to drink whiskey and that's kind of like how i know how the day is going you know so uh, you know it's noon yeah. <laughs> you know don't start that it's really funny. <laughs> but yeah i mean for me i drink uh probably eight to ten cups of coffee a day okay I'm not saying that that's healthy, so I'm not recommending that in that sense. And I definitely drink a lot of decaf, too. Because you like the taste of coffee. Yeah. And you're probably pretty high tolerance to caffeine. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you kind of build it up. It's like whiskey. You build up your ability to regulate it, I guess, a little bit better. And know, you know, you need to drink water now, not drink water, whatever it may be. Eat something. But... (laughs) You know, when you have a spare moment and have time to eat something, you do. <laughs> I try to warn people when we go on whiskey trips or like single barrel trips. I've been with in wild turkey before, and they're the most prolific for filling up your glass. Uh-huh. And I mean, you're getting a two ounce, three ounce pour every single time they fill up the... The thief. The thief. Yes, thank you. You're good. Um, And then we're going to sample 23 barrels or oh, 27 yeah. barrels. And I've seen guys just 
Like, I'm like, dude, you definitely consumed like 20 ounces of bourbon in like the last 30 minutes. How are you so standing? And no, most times they're not. Yeah. So then it gets kind of embarrassing, whatever. Um, so coffee and whiskey, are there, okay, you got bourbon barrel aged coffee. Okay. What else is being aged in coffee? What are they aged in coffee? Like, are there honey aged beans or? Like, oh, oh, for coffee. Oh, sorry. Beans. Yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. No, back to no. coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I don't really know. I think the biggest one is the barrel aged and I think it's hit or miss for barrel aged coffees. Uh, a lot some are good, some are terrible. Yeah, like a lot of times people use cheaper beans and age them in barrels. And whether you're at least the gimmick of it's bourbon and everybody loves bourbon right now, or you're masking the flavor that it's not as good, that that's sense. definitely a problem that I think you see. Um, it's like a low proof whiskey. Yeah. What are you hiding? Well, and it's the same thing when they, they, um, do different finishes for whiskey a lot of times. I'm like, but is the whiskey good on its own? Right. So something that I found really interesting since you brought up Angel's Envy was when we were there uh, not long ago, they let us try it unfinished. Oh, cool. Which was real. It's not something they sell, obviously. Right. But it was just something that was cool to see. Okay, well, so are you masking the flavor with the finish? Was it cask strength unfinished? Oh, so that's you. We just really did cool. it from that barrel before they put it in the rum. Oh. So that was cool. That was really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. I So... Angels Envy, we are the number one account in South Carolina for Angels Envy. Okay. I've gone there, I think, three times. I've never gotten past the that front entrance. They, they're they busy, and they're backed up. They are crazy, yeah. And I will say, like, Instagram, in that sense, has opened a world of experiences for me that I would never have had so as an average consumer, right? You know, I did the bourbon trail before Instagram just for fun. We paid. We did the full trail everywhere. So, you know, I saw the what is the standard experience. And now, I guess it's really hard once you go on the influencer side to go back to a standard right. experience, you know. So that that part gets hard when people ask you about recommendations. You're like, oh, I love this one. Wait, you're not going to get that. So don't go. That's not I what know. it is. It's so, it's so hard to relate. Yeah. It, no, but then you sound super pretentious. And I'm like, wait, that's not what I'm trying to, you know. Right. I'm not trying to tell you that you need to go eat lunch in the wake and make yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also subtly telling you, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. Uh, if your house was burning down, which hopefully never does. Oh, yeah. Uh, Please don't wish that on me. If the store burns down, <laughs> what bottle you grab? Do you have a favorite? No, that's like pick a favorite child. Oh, that's easy. You can definitely pick a favorite child. No, no. You oh, never tell your children that. I can definitely pick a favorite child. You know, that's a husband trait, though. I really think, like, dads always have a favorite, and moms are like, yeah. everyone's my favorite. Yeah. And, you know? It's, it's true. Yeah. So there's no favorite whiskey. Uh, I mean, there's like ones that if I just said I had a long day and I want a pour of, I'm going to always pick like ECBP. Nice. But the C batches specifically, I'm a C batch girl. I, there's a very big difference between A's, B's, and C's. So, so, I mean, that's just, that's, I guess my like standard, I, I just want something good that's reliable. Yep. But there's so many favorites. I mean, who doesn't love Old Forester Rye? Who doesn't love 101? Like, it's classic. Yep. Right? But then you also have the craft world where, you know, Green River is doing really cool things out there and budget pours, which are great. Yep. And uh, Blue Note, Uncut, Unfiltered. I mean. There's so much fun whiskey. Yeah. Like, no one knows about hard. so much of it. And it's like, you just want to share it all. And, you know, how how best right. way to do it. Question. Coffee or whiskey? You have to pick one. And that's like forever, coffee or whiskey. <laughs> this is not an easy question. I mean, it's. It's got to be coffee because I really don't think I can live without coffee now. I mean, I wake up and I'm like, all right, I need my cup of coffee. Dang. I know. Is... I know. That's, yeah. I'm like, I feel like if I go home, I'm going to change my statement later. But right now, it's fair. coffee is in survival mode. You can buy whiskey. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't take it away. <laughs> we used to, uh, my wife and I lived in a uh, hostel in France. Wow. Um, That's an experience. Yeah. When we first got married and... <laughs> Uh, we, everybody was asked the question when they came in, like beach or mountains. And that That's literally, an easy question. yeah, hundred percent. Anybody yeah. who says mountains is psychopath. No, anybody that says beach is a psychopath. Like I totally was sitting there going, it's a hundred percent mountain. And they literally like separated where people stayed by which they answer. I was like, that's pretty funny. Yeah. So uh, that's cool. I like that. Well, thank you so much for hanging out for yeah. a bit. 
um, we'd love to have you back sometime again, talk yeah. more whiskey, see if the answer changes to to um, to whiskey. I'm sure it will change later in the day. I'm still in the coffee mindset. At I'm 9 o'clock at night, yeah. yeah. 9 yeah. o'clock, you're like, yeah, it's definitely whiskey. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to have it then. For sure. Hey, y'all go follow uh, Coffee Me, no, Coffee Black Whiskey Me, right? <laughs> coffee Black. I put it on my shirt for you and everything. I tried to make it very easy. Follow Coffee Black Whiskey Neat. Uh, see her tasting notes. See if there's something that uh, she says she likes and then you also like it. And then maybe in the future we can get some QR codes um, of maybe a bottle that she really likes. And then that'll take from our shelf to her video doing a review. Um, maybe she can get that on some other uh, shelves across the United States. We appreciate you. Thank you. I Thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.